Heathrow Airport and we're awaiting a gruelling 11 hour overnight flight to Colombo. The following morning, except Sri Lanka time is five and a half hours ahead of the UK, so it's actually tomorrow afternoon, we're motoring through the bustling streets en route to our hotel. Visitors to Sri Lanka can hardly fail to notice the number of stray dogs roaming the streets. Our taxi driver informed us that while the locals often put food out, they rarely take them into the house. So this was one of the lucky ones. The journey took us past numerous paddy fields. Rice production is big business in Sri Lanka. Cattle egrets could often be seen probing the shallow water for titbits. Cattle egrets. Cattle. Mm -hmm. It was dark by the time we arrived at the Heriton Scandalamar Hotel, but when we drew back the curtains the following morning, we were stunned by the view. The hotel promotes itself as not just in the jungle, but part of the jungle and it's not difficult to see why. There was all sorts of wildlife within the grounds of the hotel, including lots of chameleons amongst the shrubs. and green forest lizards were often seen basking on exposed rock. Butterflies were plentiful and one of the most abundant was the common crow. Two more species which were seen frequently were the lemon pansy and the common gull. One of the most spectacular forest butterflies was the banded peacock. The common Mormon is a restless insect which provides few photo opportunities. This one, taking minerals from a damp section of rock, was an exception. There were several yellow and white butterfly species, such as the common grass yellow, which were by no means easy to distinguish. To add to the confusion, the lemon emigrant has both yellow and white forms. These large millipedes with an iridescent red sheen were quite common. Heavy thundery rain set in during the afternoon on our first two days. On the edge of the jungle, a pair of red vented bulbuls and a brown shrike endured the wet. The brown shrike is a common winter migrant to Sri Lanka.
That striking bird call came from a Sri Lanka jungle fowl, which was active below our bedroom window. A purple heron briefly alighted in the crown of a distant tree. A family group of toke macaques took us by surprise, storming through the balcony door to steal an apple and a banana before retreating to eat them at leisure. The toke macaque is an endemic species to Sri Lanka and there are warning notices in all the hotel bedrooms because they're known to be trouble causers. When the male became aggressive, I made a hasty retreat indoors. There's always a chance that a bite could result in rabies. By contrast, the resident stray dog was a friendly character. But there was still a risk, so we confined ourselves to bringing her a little bit of meat from the buffet each evening. There were some interesting butterflies to be seen where the lawn met the jungle, including this one, which is a chocolate soldier. The small but attractive white four-ring was also in evidence. And there were some interesting dragonflies around. It was nice to see the common miner in its natural habitat, rather than confined to a cage and being taught to speak. Various birds of prey were seen soaring over the lake, but this one gave a photo opportunity when it briefly alighted in the uppermost branches of a tree. It was tentatively identified as a white-bellied sea eagle. Another endemic Sri Lankan monkey is the purple-faced langur, and these were plentiful around the hotel. A party visited the balcony, but there was no room raid on this occasion because the door was firmly locked. Indian palm squirrels were very common, but proved difficult to photograph as they raced through the trees. Oh, 
It was much easier when this individual came into the bar area looking for titbits. This creature had us perplexed. It was feeding in the tree for an hour or more, but hardly showed its face. It's dark, isn't it? yeah. Eventually, we saw enough to identify a grizzled giant squirrel. The jungle at night is a cacophony of sound. The lights attract numerous insects to the hotel's outside walls, and the geckos follow. There are even special drink mats for the benefit of the squeamish and the uninformed. This one found its way into our room, and periodically gave a loud, bird-like call, which seemed out of proportion for its tiny size. When morning came, there always seemed to be new wildlife awaiting discovery. The garden on the sixth floor roof attracted a variety of butterflies and some colourful chameleons. The butterflies ranged in size from tiny to big brash and spectacular. This was one of the small ones, a lesser grass blue. And this is a dark brand bush brown. Adopting a typical skipper pose is a dark palm dart. And here's a female Indian sunbeam. By contrast, the male has orange wings. There are two look-alikes. This one is the common sailor. And this is the chestnut streaked sailor. The lime butterfly is a large and spectacular member of the swallowtail family. And the monkey puzzle is a much smaller butterfly, resembling a hair streak. The plain tiger occurs occasionally in southern Europe, although it's much more plentiful in Sri Lanka. Cordola National Park is about an hour's drive from the hotel, and it's famed for its elephants. So we hired a jeep to take a look.
Elephant tours are big business in Sri Lanka. It brings money into the economy, which helps preserve the wildlife. There were also some interesting wetland birds around, including the lesser adjutant. A grey heron devours its catch. At the water's edge, painted storks and spotbill pelicans had gathered to rest. Back at the hotel, it was time to explore the access road, where a couple of familiar creatures were resting on the wall. And there was also a house gecko, a little bigger than the ones we saw in the hotel. But nothing like as big as this land monitor. These can grow to over three feet in length. They commonly feed by digging through leaf litter and soil to expose grubs, insects and eggs. But they'll also scavenge when the opportunity arises, and we saw one devour a long dead shriveled frog with two or three big gulps. Small parties of yellow billed babblers can sometimes be seen flitting through the branches. And the grey hornbill is another bird which tends to move through the forest in small groups. The red wattled lapwing is a common and easily seen bird. Whereas the black hooded oriole tends to be seen only fleetingly amongst the leaves and branches. Tiny but colourful purple rumped sunbirds were often observed, but were always on the move. And the Indian robin was another common sight around the hotel. There are several tiger butterflies of very similar appearance, and the identity of this one is uncertain. By contrast, the thumbnail-sized Quaker butterfly is easily identified, and there were two or three fluttering around the thick roadside vegetation. This lily-studded rock pool was seething with frogs, which went leaping in all directions as I approached. An Indian star tortoise was another visitor to the pond. It's threatened in the wild because of its popularity in the pet trade.
time to hit the road again as we transfer to our second hotel. En route, our driver stopped beside a roadside tree where flying foxes were roosting. Heriton to Hungular is located on a beach in the southwest of the country, and there are several ornamental pools in the grounds. These pools were home to shoals of tilapia, including some large individuals. The fish had attracted the interest of a white-throated kingfisher. And a little cormorant was also present on occasions, a much smaller bird than its familiar British cousin. Spotted doves are a common bird throughout Sri Lanka and were frequently seen in the grounds of the hotel. Extensive carpets of a convolvulus type plant, studded with attractive pink flowers, grew at the top of the beach. Small parties of cattle egrets patrol the growth, on the lookout for insects. This small and near stagnant ditch proved to be a magnet for several species of water bird. A pair of cows were tethered alongside the ditch and these inevitably attracted interest from the cattle egrets. A couple of red wattled lapwings were feeding in the shallow water. And white-breasted water hens were also present, although they had a frustrating habit of disappearing into the undergrowth every time a camera was pointed at them. This Indian pond heron was another bird which found the ditch to its liking. And a pretty pied parasol dragonfly was also present. A boat safari on the Madhu Ganga River proved to be an interesting way to spend a morning. The river soon opened into a vast lake, dotted with islands and surrounded by mangroves. Very quiet, no? <laughs> We stopped on one of the islands to see a Buddhist temple and on another to see a demonstration of traditional palm weaving skills. 
But for me, the highlight was the chance to photograph water monitors. This one a beast of nearly six feet in length. And here a juvenile rests on the bough of a tree. Back in the proximity of the hotel, a couple of anglers are trying their luck on the beach. Hermit crabs were common and seemed quite content in the dry, dusty sand above the tide line. Small fish of several species were active in the rock pools. And there were some crabs which seemed just as content out of the water as in it, despite temperatures which were hovering around 30 degrees Celsius. Several more butterfly species were added to the tally, from this palm fringed glade adjacent to the beach. This one's the common leopard, also known as the spotted rustic. And this small member of the blue family is the common carillion. Well this is another of those confusing tiger butterflies possibly a blue glassy tiger. Land monitors were quite easy to find in the hotel grounds, feeding in the usual manner. Among the birds found in the locality were blue-tailed bee-eaters which were quite confiding and not difficult to approach. With the holiday drawing to a close, it was time for a final walk around the hotel gardens, where this oriental magpie robin provided a nice photo opportunity. A yellow-billed babbler and a white-bellied drongo briefly perched together on a shrub. This butterfly is called the Psyche and it seemed to favour the shady areas beneath the trees. All too soon the holiday was over. It was time for the long journey home and a chance to reflect on the diverse wildlife of this beautiful tropical island.